Let's take a look at how we can start to build a material library using USD and also how we can set these materials up in a way that we can have full control of them later on in laps. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in. I'm going to use a plugin. This is HFlow UI. It's from Mathis. Mathis is somebody that's helped us out in the past and created the sci-fi buildings generator. And this is a, a new plugin from him. So I'll leave a link to it in the description. I didn't pay or I didn't pay for it. He gave me a copy of this. So um, I'm not making anything off of it, but I, I think this is a really cool plugin. Um, so definitely take a look at that in the description. And there's a, a code down there that you can use as well to get it 50% off. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a soft create. The HFL UI is what allows us to use the network editor inside of this uh, UI inside of the viewport UI. So I'm going to go ahead and dive in, open this back up, and I'm going to start to, I'm going to lay down a sphere to demonstrate what we got going on here. So let's go ahead and do a UV project and let's set this to a polar. And then we can go ahead and jump up here and I can start to build out some material. So I'm going to drop down a material library. I'm going to just dive inside there. Let's drop down a Karma Material Builder. And we can start to set up any sort of material that we want in here. So I'm going to go ahead and drop down an Material X. Let's do a tiled image. And in here, I'm just going to leave this as a float. And then I'm going to open up our hip. I already have exported out a um, texture that we can use here. So this is going to be the Truchet tiles. So I'm gonna go ahead and wire this into our base color. And let's just dive back up here for a second. And I'm gonna go ahead and auto fill the materials here and assign to our geometry, just so that we can start to see what this is looking like. So if I go ahead and disable our UI, you can see that we have our material being placed on here. So let's go ahead and jump in here and let's start to build out this material. And for starters, I don't want this to just be this straight color here. I want to have a, an ability to change the color of our texture. So this is set to a float. Let's also just make sure this is set to raw since it is an EXR and it is in uh, just black and white space. So let's go ahead and set up a parameter. And this is how we are going to be able to control this super easily later on inside of laps without having to really dive into our network in order to change things. So I'm going to change this scope from shader parameter to subnet connector. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a name. I'm going to call it base color or base underscore color. And then I'm going to drop down a multiply. And I'm going to wire in our color here to our multiply and wire this into our base color. Now let's go to this parameter and let's make sure this is in a color. And by default, I'm going to go ahead and just set this to be white. And it looks like this has made our geometry disappear. There it is back. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but we now have this. Oh, that's because I needed to update this base color here. Um, so now that we have one parameter set up, we can start to lay out um, a little bit more parameters for this to make this actually a little bit more useful. So I'm going to drop down a image place 2D or material X, material X place 2D. Wire that into our text cords. And then we can do our texture coordinates, material X texture coordinates. Wire that into our texture coordinates there. And then we can also set up a parameter for our scale. And I'm going to call this one texture underscore scale. And you have to be careful because if you name things like, I think scale is one of them. If you just name it scale, it doesn't want to work properly. So be careful what you name these. I would make sure that they're not aligning with anything that's going to overwrite like maybe um, these internal names. So I'm going to set this again to our subnet connector. And then this needs to be a vector two. And then we want to set the float default. So something that looks good with this particular image that we're going to be using, I'm going to set this to be 
a one and then a two for our defaults. If I dive up here, you can see that that is going to carry forward and this should be auto populating. Now you can see that we, what we have going on here. So let's dive back inside and let's set up maybe a, another parameter. We're going to call this one roughness multiplier. Make sure it again is a subnet connector. We'll leave this one as a float. I'm going to drop down to another multiply. And then we can wire in our parameters in here and then wire this into, let's say, our specular color. And then lastly, we can wire in our image into displacement. And then we can drop down another parameter and wire this into our scale. And I'm going to call this one displacement scale subnet connector again and then we'll leave this as a float and for this i'm going to make sure the default is set to something really low like maybe like 0.02 and actually i need to come into this parameter here and set our default for the roughness here i'm just going to set this to be one because we're multiplying it by our our image here and this pretty much sets up our material so I'm gonna jump back out here and just to make this look a little bit better because it looks kind of crappy right now. I'm gonna dive inside here and I'm gonna come in here and just subdivide. Actually, we don't even need to subdivide our mesh necessarily. We can really just crank up our rows and columns. And now if we dive back out, you can see that we have a little bit better of displacement showing up here. And we can take this now and I'm going to add in a layer break because I don't want to export our geometry. I only want to export our material. I'm actually gonna make a copy of this and I'm going to, let's name this one like tiles and we'll call this one like tiles two, I guess. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm actually going to maybe get rid of a couple of these parameters so we only have a couple here just to show that we have this works for for multiple different materials so now i can take a usd wrap and i can output this to disk so i'm going to change this from default to we'll call it i already have exported one as materials um, it's going to be in the project files but we'll call this one materials underscore example dot usd we can click save to disk and now we can do a sub layer wire in our sop create here use a reference node wire that into our second input here for our sub layer and then for the file pattern we're going to go up to our geo is where it's saved under and you see i've exported out a couple different things here we'll do this materials example which is what we had before and we bring this in, it gives you an error, but it's not anything that we're gonna have to worry about right here. It just says the output stage is not set, which is fine for now. Let's do a material assign. You can also do a material linker if you would like. It's actually, I'm actually gonna do that because I prefer the interface of the material linker. And if we look now, we have our karma material here. So, if you notice, we had two that we had set up here, but it only exported one. So we only have one available to our, our materials reference here, our reference file that we created. The reason for that is if I come back to this material library, you can see that we only have one material in here. So if I add another one and click this auto fill to materials, it's going to add in that other one. And actually the name, um, was incorrect here too. So we'll go ahead and correct that. So now that we have both of them set up, we don't have to have that assigned to the geometry. We can go ahead and save to disk now. And let's just refresh this. You see it's already refreshed. And you can see that we have this tiles two that is automatically being imported. So now we can assign these to if we want. So we could assign this to our SOP create. And you can see that we have this now being assigned to our geometry.
So that's all great. So now we have access to everything. We've just basically set up a material library for USD. So you can create all of your materials and export them as these USD files. And then you have the ability to just reference them in to your geometry um, or to, to layer onto your geometry. But we can also edit these materials because we've set it up in a way that allows us to basically control the different settings that we would want to control. The way we do that is with the Edit Material Properties node. And now I can come in here and just select this tiles, wire that into our primitives, and we can select Create Parameters. And now if I go ahead and click Set or Create on our base color, I can come in here and I can change this to blue. And you can see that this is going to go ahead and automatically update in our viewport. I can also change the texture scale. Personally, I think that this works really well with a two to one scale. So I'm going to paste relative references. And I'm going to multiply that by two. And let's maybe drop that down to 0.5. You can see we get much better tiling going on here. And we could affect our roughness as well. You can see that's affecting the roughness on our geometry here. And we can also affect our displacement scale as well. So we can affect all of the different settings that we want with these in this node, this edit material properties node. And you can also, if you want to, type in edit material network. And we can come in here, wire in our path, click load, and we can dive inside. And we have access to the full material here as well inside of our inside of our material edit material node. So we can still access that if we want, but I personally think that this edit material properties works really well to just, you know, without having to dive into to change everything, it works really well to have everything and a nice UI interface here. Then if we wanted to select our second material, so our tiles too, we can come in here, we can reselect that create parameters. It's going to create those again. I'm gonna go ahead, it's it's changed what we have available to us. I'm gonna just delete that. I don't know if there's a way to clear those out. It doesn't seem to give us a, a good way to clear those out, unfortunately. Um, so if you know how to do that, just let me know, I guess. And then we can select this create parameters. And again, now we only have access to that base color and that texture scale, which if we come back to this material library, you can see that that's all that we had set up as our parameters here as well. So this gives us a really nice clean way of working with materials inside of Solaris and USD. It allows us to build up our, our libraries of materials and everything else that we want um, in order to, to generate your, your scenes a little bit quicker. So you can start to export things as USD and then bring them in and it works super, super well. And also since they are as USD files, they're going to load a little bit quicker inside of Karma than if you're just like creating things with, you know, SOP creates and trying to import them that way. So since you're referencing everything, everything works a little bit quicker. And that's just a, a great way of working inside of Solaris. So play around with this, see how this all works out. And uh, hopefully this is something that will help you out in your future projects. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.